Okay, here's my introduction to the PSOC uh, prototyping kit from Cyprus. Um, I got it in the in the mail. Came in that kind of a container, nice and light. It was four dollars. Uh, it's got a USB connector on one end. That's uh, what powers it and communicates with it. Um, it's got a push button and an LED that you can control. I soldered some pins onto it, and uh, we're ready to go. So the first thing you do when you want to learn something about some new hardware is go to YouTube and see if somebody's made a video of it already. Best way to learn. So I looked for PSOC prototyping kit and I only found one. There it is there. By some guy named Matthias in I think Germany. It's in German. Um, there's no audio, just just a couple of wires coming off of the board and flashing an LED. You can't see the LED flashing with the... Oh, there I think I just saw it flash. Anyway. That was useless, so that provided no help for me. So I realized I was going to have to do it on my own. So I went out and learned, uh, or went back to the PSOC uh, website and learned about the prototyping kit myself. Read the manuals and such. So there's their website. Shows the board. You've got there. Uh, you can uh, buy it there or get it from DigiKey for four bucks. Um, PSOC Creator software you need to download, and the USB serial development stuff you got to download as well and install both of those. Um, and there's documentation and the example project for either the 41 or the 42. So I'm going to delete my example project and just start right from scratch. So there's the example project. I'm going to delete it. And I'll download it again just for the sake of this video. Okay, so uh, here it is, 4200, 4100, that's the board I've got. So I'll download that and extract it into my PSOC folder. There it is. Documents, PSOC. All right. Okay, so now I've got it. Now, I guess uh, I'll show you the USB serial software. I just ran it. Um, Windows will automatically find the driver, if you've got it set up that way, find the driver for your, um, your USB serial interface as soon as you plug in the device. So hopefully your Windows has no problem finding the driver. And you should then have a device when you run the serial program like this. And I just connect to it and just test it, you know, to make sure it's visible. I click program and it says it's happy. So anyway, uh, that's just the test. And then I went into device manager to check my COM ports to make sure it's being recognized okay and there's no yellow. <laughs> so I look at my ports, my COM ports, and uh, I see I have a COM3. That's USB serial. So I'm gonna unplug the device And there, USB COM3 is gone. Now I'll plug it back in. And it reappears. So I know I'm working on COM3. So now I think I'm going to start up PSOC Creator. And I'll show you about opening up a project. The, the example project for the 4100. Okay, here we go. I'll go uh, once it's ready. Brings up some uh, reference material, documentation, all in one spot. So open project, and the example project's under document, PSOC, and there it is. And it's called bootable, bootloadable blinking LED. Now, there is another file down there called UART bootloader. You're going to load that later. Um, anyway, for now, I'm just going to load the bootloadable blinking LED. It's in core M0, whatever that is. and uh, or, No, I'm sorry, the project file. Yeah, the project file. Yeah. Okay, it comes up with this uh, component update because uh, the components in the example project might be out of date. So this uh, updates them and archives your old ones. It's just something you have to go through once when you download an example project. It's the only time you got to do that. And there's the archive of the... Uh, way it was before. You just ignore that. So, updating components. So while it's doing that, there's there's two versions of this. You can program it like the $4 version like I'm going to do, which requires that you load this bootloader component into your projects. 
That way you can just stick with a $4 version and just download directly from the uh, USB. Otherwise, you got, got to buy a programmer for $80 or you can buy the Pioneer board for $30 um, where you don't need the boot, bootable component added. Anyway, here's your project. Uh, your work area is in the middle, messages in the bottom, project files on the left, and uh, components on the right. And there's a pulse width modulator component, and there's the bootloadable bootloader component. So in that, you have to load the hex file for the bootloader. You only have to do that once. I'll show you that more in more detail when I do a project from blank. So here's a pulse width modulator. Now you can set a bunch of parameters. It's set to divide the clock by a thousand. So then the clock is, uh, I think, one kilohertz. Let's zoom in a bit and have a look at the clock. Open that up. And yeah, it's one kilohertz in the middle there. So it divides it by a thousand, so you end up with a one second uh, flashing LED. And so it's done totally through hardware, um, programmable hardware. Uh, there's no C code required for this to just flash the LED, this example project. Um, <clears throat> so let's see what we're going to do next. Over here, um, we'll look at the pin mapping next. This is the uh, the chip and the way the pins are mapped. The LED is mapped to uh, right there. I can't quite read it here. Is it 1.6? I think is the name of the pin. So you can map your LED. Well, the LED on this board is connected, wired, soldered to uh, 1.6. So that's why we chose that one. But you can use any pin for any function, from what I understand. So now we're going to build. This will take a while. Oh, first we're going to look at the C code. Uh, it's just mostly comments. There is really nothing. It just uh, goes to sleep software-wise. It doesn't do anything. But you can do all kinds of things in here. You can you know, control the pulse width modulator, different frequencies based on a, another input or something. So anyway, we're building now. And this is going to take a little while. Elaborating design. I think maybe I'll uh, cut a little bit of this out to make the video shorter. Okay, so it's just about done. There it's build succeeded. Good news. Now we have to go download it. So we go into tools, uh, bootloader host. So this is how we're going to download to the board. Um, you got to pick the right COM port, COM3. And you got to pick the file. The first time you do this for a project, you need to pick the file that you're going to download. And it's the um, it's, it corresponds with the name of the project. So you go into PSOC. It's the bootloadable blinking LED. And you got to go in the Cortex M0. That's where the actual executable code ends up. And you go and keep going until you find the file. There it is. That's the file that gets downloaded. Now we got to get the board into download mode first. So we're going to have to uh, restart the board with the button pushed. Here we're going to restart the board. So we're going to take the power out. Take the power out. See the button there? Take the power out, push and hold the button, and then power it up and it blinks flat, fast. That means it's into uh, download mode and we're ready to go. Okay, now we're back in Creator here. We're going to download. Make sure it's 115200. And click the download arrow. And watch the bottom. It should do that. Programming with a progress bar. And programming completed. And you are done. Now your program's in the board and it is running. So good luck. I will do some more projects um, after this.